Good food, don't say what. <laughs> it was good food. <laughs> it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. Um, your your family, and by family I mean because you, we grew up hearing stories of, um, you know, when your mom passed that most of the part, um, either little partitions or homes or houses there were mm. owned yes. by, well, the, I think when they say your family, they mean your mother. Yes. But life tells me that if you own anything, then poverty isn't part of your life. Yeah. So how did the dynamics work? There was some money, but not enough money. Mm. Initially, there wasn't any money, but okay. Flavia, I was born to the most enterprising woman right. I've ever seen. Uh, our mother, I think I was much younger when she bought that plot mm. in Kamocha, where I now do studio and firebase seats. Right. Um, but I grew up. What was it before? It was just a home. The, no, there was a garage there. Okay. There was a garage and uh, there was a small plot of land. Mm -hmm. But after my mother bought it, my elder brothers, Eddie Awe and Nyanzi, mm -hmm. helped her put up uh, a shack. Okay. You know, our house was uh, a mud house initially mm -hmm. with a tin roof. And it was built by my elder brothers, mm. Nyanzi and Edia, were together with my mother. So we went transforming that over the years. Over the Actually, years. in the house, in, on our house in Kamocha, there is still a part mm -hmm. that we you just kept. decided to preserve. Mm. That part is tin roofed mm. and it is uh, mud and water. And we maintained it like to that remind you. to remind us of where we come wow. from. Wow. So you literally saw her do from scratch to where you ended up yes that yes. teaches you something doesn't it a lot it, it taught us a lot continues yeah. to teach us but then it you know now when i think about the dynamics of being in in the marriage and having children it's assumed that mm. you learn hard work from a father assumed but you were having these lessons mm. of being a go-getter yeah. trying and doing and never giving up from a woman. Yeah. Uh, Flavia, know that our father is not hardworking. Yes. He was very hardworking. In fact, even very daring. That's what landed him Risky. in trouble. <laughs> yeah. But for me, the example that I saw, I'm, I'm told about my father's greatness mm -hmm. by my elder Yeah, siblings. but it wasn't because of proximity. Exactly. Not, yeah. But for me, what I saw, yeah. everything that I saw, I mom. saw on my mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder what your first song choice will be. One love from Bob Marley. Bob Marley. I wouldn't be surprised that you would have a Bob Marley song. Why? <laughs> <laughs> it was also Mama's Child, right? So really yeah. the influences are I'm sure yeah. quite similar till the But end. I believe in love. I believe love is a solution to solve most of the problems it is, in it the is, world. It yeah. is. But it's also the hardest thing to have or give. <laughs> well yeah. Few things are so hard as hard as easy. <laughs> a term mm -hmm. and then they elevated me to a school that had a, bigger, a better standard that's right. Kasaka Primary School P3 still. For my P4 mm -hmm. I went to Kanoni Church School mm -hmm. that was a Catholic school right. um, and that's where I did my P5 okay. as well so that's the longest uh, two, period two, two years. Yeah, in the <laughs> primary school for my P6 I went to uh, St. Aloysius Vokalaji mm -hmm. Primary School and I was in P6 when I sat for my P7. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's a long story. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm like, should we ask? <laughs> yeah. So I but went why, to... why the movement? It's class. The stability was not there as yet. I, in Uganda, there are children that they call Omana mm. I was a sickly child that I needed to be with my mother. Oh, so true. whenever my mother had a transfer, she would carry me. Wow. But that was not the only reason. Okay. Most times, by the end of the year, I had performed exceptionally good, but I did not have school fees ah. for the next year. So it is only my report that would yes. take me to the next place, only to leave Gasasude fees. <laughs> <laughs> so when I went to senior one, yeah, okay. for my senior one, mm. I went to St. Maria Goretti Secondary School mm -hmm. in Katende. Mm. That was senior one, uh, first term. Mm -hmm. Senior one, second term, I went to Brain Trust Academy. Mm -hmm. And yes, that's the longest uh, secondary school that, that I did, in. that I was in. That's the secondary school I spent the longest time. Because right. I was there for senior one, senior two, and senior three. Oh, okay. For senior four, I went to Kitante mm -hmm. in school. And that's where I met 
All the, the everybody that I made, <laughs> Turman, Master Parotti, Jerry Shaka, the late, Rude Boy, the Roe, Baby Cool. It was such a transitional school for ETC, yeah, yeah, that's when I started actually uh, singing. Mm. Uh, I did my senior four in Kitante mm -hmm. in 96. And uh, I went for my senior five, I went to Ruridi uh, Secondary mm. School, senior six. I went to Kololo Secondary School, that's where I did my senior six ah. from. I went to Makere University, first did uh, social sciences, okay. but I opted out of it and uh, did MDD. The years that you're saying, what do you want to do? When did Robert Chagulani start to say? Mm. I was still talking about school. Where were you? Olimba. Eh eh. Chagatambo la sinama. Tugende. Social sciences. You opted out of MDD. I went opted for MDD because. There, you had already actually get... established yourself in music at that point. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, I was not established as well. It was at the uh, Department of Music, Dance and Drama that I. Kagoma was not when you were at university. I was at university yeah. doing MDD. Right. Yeah. So after that MDD, of course, I went out to the world and uh, spent some more than 15 years in the field. Mm -hmm. uh, it was in 2016 that I went back to mm -hmm. school and I went to law school. To law school, yes. Um, I went to East Africa International University, mm -hmm. uh, but I was there just for a year. And I changed university to Cavendish okay. because by then okay. my, uh, the law degree was not accredited. The upside. Then, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just completed this year my, my law degree, but still I also went to do a master's in human rights at the University of London. Mm. So that's what I'm doing. In between there, I also <laughs> went to Harvard, you know, for a brief course. So the, the, <laughs> the, the school journey uh, <laughs> is not short. Yeah, it's not short. It continues. But the bigger yeah. school is the street. Of course. Yeah. It's where you learn every, uh -huh. everything you're using. Uh -huh. When did you start to say, Kaneye Mumbuka? to contribute to life. I did not say that. I was pushed to that. <laughs> okay. Life made yeah. you... When we were in P2... P2 is... You're quite young. At with my elder brother, Julius, because he was more farmer. Right. He would carry a basket. He would carry uh, my mother's either sungusa oh. or kabalagala or fried uh, cassava. Mm. So during break time... At school? Yeah. At, at the school. school you were going to? Oh, yeah. Wow. During break time, my elder brother would run business and I would run with him. Mm. I would later learn because mm. that was the, the family business. Mm. When you're home, Mutambuza mm. Kabalagala, my mother was doing various kinds of businesses. Runakula Katale, Akose Ndibota, Ndibota is old clothes yes. or old shoes. A bell of clothes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, as time went on, my mother also ventured in. Uh, video showing every band. Every band. Yeah. Mm. So we would be running those our mother's small. Business. So she would start the idea and the business, mm -hmm. and then because I mean, you many boys around. Yes, yes. You get a couple of Yes. Really? Yes. Yeah. That helped us a great deal, and of course, as our elder brothers also, mm. you know, took us under their wings, particularly Chairman Nyanzi, mm. who was owning hardware and I was running it. Right. So those skills helped us a great deal mm -hmm. growing up. But did you end up enjoying the, the journey along the way? Because I was scared to lose Honestly, mm. I didn't enjoy it in the beginning. Okay. But I just had to accept it. It, it was nice to earn, it was nice to work, but I was not doing what I was enjoying. I only enjoyed business when I got into the music business, ah. because that was fun, that was passion, mm. you know, so that's when it, it wasn't just survival, no, it was enjoying, just survival. it was enjoying, what I you were doing. felt it. Your brothers, I think this is your two elder brothers, just one had got into music, some sort of mm -hmm. music, because that's when the studio ended up being built. Yeah. Tell us that journey, because there's an assumption that your brother just set up a studio and you said, okay, I'll just make music. <laughs> Actually, no. You know, even when I was much, much younger, mm -hmm. I, was, I grew up to a musical family. Mm -hmm. When my father picked me from Kamocha, mm -hmm. together with my brother Julius, to take us and reunite us with a bigger family yes. when Sanity had uh, been, established. Had been yeah. established, you know. I found so many of my siblings that I also didn't even know mm. because I'm coming from this uh, else, uh, yeah. mother and uh, there were many mothers. So in that big house in Gomba, there was a family choir. 
okay. of my elders. Oh my God, I have my sisters that sing. So it was so beautiful when I went to that family. Mm. I was, Eddie Awe was just one of okay. the many singers. Oh, the one who got more pronounced. Yes. Well, I, I take it for granted, I always talk about, um, because I'm an only child, I've never understood how people are many in one home oh my and God. enjoy it. How was that? I it mean, was, I guess it was you guys are 10, but then mm. now you're reunited and you're more than 10. Yeah, we were in a house, maybe about 28 children. Yeah. there about mm -hmm. it was beautiful of okay. course there was a fight <laughs> every day of course at the end of every day our father had his sticks in the corner so he had to come he was a strict disciplinarian right so he had to come and punish the offenders of the day mm. and also <laughs> reward the good children there was offenders of, of, of the that day, day. <laughs> of course of course every evening mm. 7 p.m or so mm -hmm. there was a report Oh. So and so, and I wonder who was doing the world. report. So and so <laughs> stole uh, mango. So and so was reported. Uh, so many were making giving reports, including myself. You were giving reports, uh, or you were on the yeah. offender? You, you were number one on the offenders list. I was one of the offenders, but because I was young. <laughs> Ya <laughs> Masomera <laughs> As if they are on springs. You know, it was normal no more in that community. Yeah. Do you think that's what influenced you? Because you were around people who were doing certain things. Yes, or? the influence largely came from the Jamaicans. Mm. The Jamaicans were facing same conditions as us poverty, deprivation, you know, a dilapidation in the infrastructure, etc. But they were making it look cool. You know, Buju or Shaba is in the ghetto, but there's this vibe in the ghetto. Mm. They are refusing to pity themselves because of their circumstances. Mm -hmm. That gave us energy. We started celebrating the ghetto. Mm -hmm. That's why we started feeling, even proudly referring to ourselves as, as the ghetto, yeah. We proudly refer to the ghetto as our home. That's how people... Because there's a started. picture of exactly. another ghetto elsewhere in the world exactly. that looked cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was cool to belong to the ghetto. Mm -hmm. And we gave it a new face to the extent that right. even those guys that came from what one would call well-to-do families mm -hmm. started wishing they were part of the they were part <laughs> of, of the, the ghetto. <laughs> and some of us that, mm -hmm. you know, had some lugazi would mm -hmm. go to school to elevate and dare to step mm -hmm. beyond our confines, you know, got taken so serious to the extent that they started calling me the ghetto president because mm. I was in the ghetto then you become a president yeah wasn't that though um, something that you, your fellow people would take negatively because mm. why were you accepted why was you, do you know do you get what I'm trying to say sometimes I, I completely get you looked at in your community as gorachol was a guasing that's very true mm. in most cases in deprived communities especially ghetto communities when you show signs yeah. of wanting to elevate yourself beyond the surroundings, they tend to detest you. Yeah. And it's true that in the ghetto, even when you wear specs, <laughs> they define you as rugezi yeah. When you speak, speak English, they define you as rugezi But I also had understood the code mm. that you just have to win and win and win. Yeah. In the ghetto especially, 
in the boys world mm -hmm. is defined so much by violence the more you can fight mm -hmm. is the more respect that you can get so i was a boxer mm -hmm. and after speaking this english of rugezi i would prove to whoever challenged me that i could beat the hell out of them so that alone gave me acceptance mm -hmm. we had to be accepted by force by force yeah it's it's taking the power not waiting it's for it. taking it yeah. Even the times when your mom was alive, I'm sure you had inklings of this life. Wasn't she worried? Interestingly, when my mother was alive, I was a little bit much more grounded. I'd never tasted alcohol when my mother was alive. Mm -hmm. I'd never tasted a cigarette or a joint of wood. Besides escaping from home and going to watch films in these ghetto mm -hmm. video halls, mm -hmm. I'd never spent a night out in a disco. Mm. But when my mom passed away, it affected me a great deal. It mm. almost made me lose my way. Mm. Because, you know, I lived my life so much oh, for my yeah. mother. Mm. You know, even going to school, I struggled so much to perform better because that's the only thing that made my mother happy. Mm. And after bringing a good report card to my mother, mm -hmm. it didn't matter what they talked about me. She was happy. Yeah. So when my mother passed away, in many ways I lost my moral compass. Mm. I, that's when I started drinking. That's when I started smoking. Anything that passed me, I got so violent and all that. I only, thank God, regained my moral compass if I did. Much later on, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's honest. What about the big brothers? Because... Normally, um, that they were mm. then the rains almost fall to the next yes. adult. Yes. And in this case, you had Nyanzi. Yeah. And actually, with your number six, technically, you had all Yeah, we had all these others, but those who that took charge most were Nyanzi and Yahweh. Ah. And after the passing of our mother, we, in many ways, got scattered. Mm. Each one of us started looking for a way out. Right. Yahweh succeeded in uh, leaving the country and he went to America. Now we only had Nyanzi, but he was also growing mm. that later he even got a family. Yeah. And we were growing because I was 15 going to 16 when my mother passed away mm. and those are very, very important years, years for, yeah. Yeah, for a young man. So for the next four or five years, mm. I was lost until I met Bobby. When you say lost, Bobby, I want you to actually give us the real picture. Because are you then living with Nyanzi? Are you then in the streets figuring out A, B, C, D? I started living by myself. Wow. Yeah. The only thing that I didn't lose, mm -hmm. that was the interest in education. Okay. My mother had made me promise, just a short period before she passed away, mm -hmm. that regardless of the interest in music, which mm -hmm. was largely regarded as a spoiler, Mm -hmm. Umana, you know, once you go into music, into music yeah. especially raga, mm -hmm. you are wasted. Mm -hmm. So my mother had made me promise her mm -hmm. that I'll never abandon education. Mm -hmm. So whatever came my way, you had to go to school. I continued going to school, thanks to my elder brother Nyanzi, he was paying my school okay. fees. So yeah, I continued. Mm -hmm. I completed my senior six. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, I didn't perform as well as, as I would have loved to perform, mm -hmm. but. It was a question of, you know, making sure that I graduate and my mother will not haunt me. We take it for granted when you hear ghetto president, mm. uh, guy or ghetto, mm. you know, and it looks nice. Mm. But you were a 15, 16 year old who had to figure life out for himself after mm. the death of his mother. Even if the ghetto became home, what changes in your life? When you look back and you can see a 15 year old now in the ghetto, what can you tell us about their life that we will take for granted, thinking they're okay, judging yeah. them, and uh, knowing? I'll tell you that all those children, boys and girls, shouldn't be judged. They're not where they are, or they don't end up where they are because they want. For example, Flavia, looking at you now and remembering the young girl that yeah. is coming from down in the swamp yeah. there, going to school, I wonder how, how you I did not there. end yeah. up as a karaoke dancer. <laughs> True. <laughs> I, I wonder. Because it's around you. Exactly. Yeah. That is the norm. Mm -hmm. You know, just like I also make people wonder how I did not end up in prison or yeah. die so early or mm. something. Even the fights that used to happen, how people don't die and, you know, exactly. you end up on the wrong end. Me, it's the power of God. 
Mm -hmm. that I did not die in my 20s because I was fairly violent. Mm. And even when I succeeded musically, it was like I was trying to revenge on my old life. And that happens to so many ghetto mm. youth when they It's like you're looking succeed. in a mirror and you're fighting the other person. <laughs> exactly. You don't want to be identified with what you wear. That's yeah. why you have to buy very many gold chains to mm. prove a point to your own self. That's why you need a huge car or many cars more than you can even drive so that was with me i credit education a great deal because mm -hmm. it opened my mind i loved to read okay. and there's this one autobiography that i read the autobiography of malcolm x and i saw myself i saw this guy that had never even gone to school like i had but he's going to prison transformed him mm -hmm. he was in prison for 10 years and that made him discover that he had many, many more gifts in him. Gifts in him. He only needed to pick one and magnify it. Now, I had not gone to prison yet. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, it was an opportunity to learn from the lives right. of other people. And even the guys that we were growing up with. For example, there's this one guy called Bia mm. I even sang about yes, him. Yes, yes. This guy was in Gomba was a friend to Fide mm. Utaya, and he would speak to kids, you know, that would gather around to see Fide whenever he came to our village. And this guy spoke so much sense to us, and I picked so much mm. from him. Of course, there are also great guys that come from the ghetto, yeah. Godfrey Nyakana. Mm. He used to live there in Chebando. He became an international boxer, mm. and he would come because we respected him so much. He would come, he would personally sit me down as one of the boys around and it speaks sense to me so the sense that i would pick from various people unexpected people yeah. shaped me Built you. a great mm. great deal to make me realize that wait this life is still long and i can mm. you know change it into anything that i want what's your second song choice believe by dax vibes <laughs> right yeah. And this is not just you supporting your brother. It's a good no, it's song not that you just, like. It's, it's believe. Uh, I wasn't Dax Vibes fan because up to now I can't believe it's that boy singing that amazing <laughs> right. stuff. But yeah. just the song itself and mm, the word believe. It is good. Yeah. yeah. Mm. What made you believe that you could do it yourself? <laughs> Initially, actually, music mm. was the outstanding thing that I could do mm. to stand out. Right. As young boys, when they're growing, some go into sports, mm. not as a passion, but to stand out. Yeah. You know, now I, I was not a sportsman, mm. and having moved from Gomba, I came to Kampala, uh, schools like Brindas and Kitante. I was not the smartest that there was. And I didn't have so much confidence to even speak out or debate. Mm -hmm. So it was music that would make me stand that would out. give you a voice. That would give me a voice. And uh, every Friday there was an entertainment session at school. That's why I saw, And I would see guys rapping. Mm. And I see never another guy in Basso So I also tried it out. And it worked. And that's when I got in touch with my close friend, then Master Parrot. Mm. And, uh, you know, we made a duo, mm. and the rest is history. But most importantly, I did that music because I wanted a voice and to represent not just myself, mm -hmm. but those that are like me. Why did you think that you would be the one to represent people like you? No, first, I wanted to represent myself. My yourself. My, myself. <laughs> then... Prove those. to yourself you can do it. Yes. And then also represent those that are like me, there are many mm -hmm. of my friends, of my contemporaries, that could not let alone sing, but could not even speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, I would see their approval of everything I said as if right. it's coming from, from their own mouths. Do you think that later on when you looked at your fan base, most mm -hmm. of them were following you because it was a mirror of what they could be? 
Yes, yes, many of them. The possibility. Yes. Of Mr. Wolof uh -huh. and I become yeah, so many, and so. many of my fans. You wanted to stand out, but later I'm sure you realize when you were starting that music is a business. Mm -hmm. You don't just sing for the sake of singing. Interesting, <laughs> Flavia, for us, and I believe most of my generation mm. did not go into music for the money. For example, me. Mm. Me, by the time I started singing, I was making my money. Mm. Me, by the time I was in senior folk, I would have my two, three tunnels of bricks. Mm. I had my business. I had, you remember that kiosk where we used to sell tapes? Mm. You know, it was mine. Mm. I, I was making my small Kakash money. On the yeah, side, my yeah. cash on the side. However, music was a passion. Yes. Besides the voice mm. and uh, representing other people, it made us stand out. Right. So it was cool. It was passion, purely passion. Mm -hmm. Of course, along the way, mm. we started realizing, wait, this passion <laughs> can actually bring in some money. Yes, yes. You know, we started by having to pay to mm. be allowed mm. on yes. stage. Uh, and I hope my kids don't get to listen to this part. Yeah. But whenever you go to a dance there, you cannot be seen by the girls. And mm -hmm. if you step up there and mm -hmm. give them a song or two, and mm -hmm. then after you position, Don't you, create a guy. <laughs> you create a guy and say, hey, guys, did you see? I'm the one who was at stage. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <Who's on> stage? <laughs> you have to not yeah. be accessible, such as uh, you exactly. remain a star. You, know? uh, uh, you have to try to be accessible because even really? sometimes, even when you wanted to be accessible, nobody ever wanted oh, to access dear. you. So, <laughs> Yeah. So everybody thinks Kagoma was your first song. It Actually, wasn't your no. first studio song. No, it, it was your first hit song. It was my first hit song, mm -hmm. but not my first studio song. Yeah. I did my first studio song, I think, when I was 13 years, mm. 13 or 14. And, and uh, Dream Studios was already there. The no, it was. wasn't there. We recorded it in Namalondo Theater. Mm. I was rapping under uh, this, this uh, gentleman called uh, Papa Ronnie mm. Ndaola. So he cited me, he was friends with my elder brother, right. Eddie Awe, who was already... In music. In, in music. Mm. But he was not rapping. So I was doing my raga mm. and Ronnie saw me. And they were doing a song for Justin Joko, the boxer, mm. who was going to fight some, I think, Italian boxer. Right. So they took me to feature in that song. Oh. But eventually they deleted my voice because <laughs> it was so young. <laughs> but I did a couple of other songs. Yeah. We did a full album uh, called Namoleme, mm. but it never came out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so, yeah, we, I had been singing for about six years Imagine by the time I did Kagoma. Why did Kagoma stand out? Did you push it more? No, I did not push Kagoma. So after singing with my support for some years, maybe five, mm -hmm. since Kitante days, um, there reached a time where he realized that our career had no hope. Mm -hmm. So he recently <laughs> asked wait, wait, me, what does that mean? <laughs> because things were not working out. We had been singing, and then boom, Red Bandon comes. He's a star. <laughs> we sing, we sing. <laughs> Boom, Menton Kruno and Mega D come, yes. they are stars. We see, then the comedian, then maybe call said, ah. Then Mr. Saparot reached out to me and said, you know what, bro? She got me. Play a for me to never sit down. And we need to divide right. this bad luck so that mm. it does not affect because us. Because you can't have two bad luck exactly. together. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and he probably was right. Oh, dear. Because six months later, I did Kagoma. Oh. And I did Kagoma, not expecting a hit song, mm -hmm. but I wanted to do a song that is so lyrically powerful mm -hmm. that if anybody ever gave me an opportunity to step on stage, mm -hmm. they would never forget mm -hmm. the lyrics that I of the, song. of the song. They would never forget the vibe of the mm -hmm. song. That's the mind I had when I was doing mm -hmm. Kagoma. It was the first song I did alone by myself. Okay. All the songs that I'd been doing were Bobby Wine and Master Parody. Mm. We had about 13 songs, but none of them was making sense. Right. So when uh, he terminated that collaboration, that mm. duo, I went in search mm. of myself. And when I searched for myself, I found, I found Kagoma. I remember um, later, WBS had a show. Kazora mm -hmm. had Jam Agenda. Mm -hmm. He had actually just, I think, for six to eight months taken over. Mm. Jam Agenda from mm. Collins and, and Nana. Mm. And they had a show at Africana. Mm. So all of us were there and they were mm. bringing new talents mm. to help them 
you know, mm. you come, you sing, because mm. you sing on TV and mm -hmm. you go. And of mm. course, you remember music mm. back in the day, we mm. struck, I think, mm. and attest to that. Mm. Musicians used to be in a line. Mm. Everybody was fighting mm. for mic time. For <laughs> like I said, some you know? pay to, you, to be Exactly. To you, you understand what that? I mean, just to get a chance on a microphone. Mm. And I remember you, you were there. And of course, for me up until at that point, I only knew you as the guy mm. in the, that guy in the ghetto. I didn't really mm. know you. There was the a guy that, that your parents <laughs> warned you about. <laughs> so here you are yeah. in your vest mm -hmm. and trousers and you're waiting for mic time. And I said, what, what can he possibly sing? Yeah. But I think what had happened and they told us later is that you had Watambuza, mm. and that's the right way to say it, Kagoma, yeah. mm. in your own people. Yeah. That he underestimated you. Yeah. And he gave a chance to everyone. And I think midway the break, mm -hmm. he gave you a microphone. Mm -hmm. And I, I was there. I'll never forget it. Mm -hmm. And I think the beat eh, mm -hmm. dropped. Mm -hmm. They did it. Kagoma. Everybody yeah. went crazy. Yeah. Your fellow artists, the unknown artists. Yeah. It was only us, the presenters, on the TV. That didn't understand didn't what, what. <laughs> <laughs> That had no clue yeah. what the song was, yeah. who this guy yeah. had become. Of course, even I had not known the musical side of you, remember? Mm -hmm. I just knew you from our, you know, yeah, from home, yeah. Manabe Waka. Yeah. And Kazora immediately said, who is this? Yeah. The interview started, everybody, because now there was intrigue of mm -hmm. how can people know this person, but mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. don't really know who you are. Yeah. Was that deliberate or you just said, baby, I'm to bang and let the music go to them? Did you know that the music had infiltrated the bottom, the people, before yeah. <laughs> coming up to TV? Actually, Flavia, by the time my name went up there yeah. in the mainstream media, yeah. I was already deep, deep in the ghetto. Mm -hmm. You see, in the ghetto then, and I believe even now, yeah. that those small performances in tiny yes. groups, mm -hmm. events, bars, communities, yeah. events, yep. etc. And that's the audience I would perform to. I would perform to as few as four or five people. What? Wherever I got the opportunity. Mm. I made sure I performed to them. Even when, before Bobby knew that I was an artist, when I was still vibing her, we took a walk from the National Theatre, we passed by Baton Street, and the taxi guys were like, oh, Bobby, still a chick. <laughs> yeah. And Bobby was... That was your audience. That Those was were my your audience. Yeah, I so the mainstream you. people didn't know me. Mm. So by the time I got opportunity to step on those stages, the ghetto people that were in the audience yep. already knew me. What changed life? Because someone can say they saw you that day, and mm. they woke up one day and... It was the top three artists, <laughs> and you are one of the top three. But there's no way it yeah. was just a snap of a finger. No, it wasn't. It wasn't like that at all. It what was, was the journey like? Um, I got known for various things mm. initially, not even just the music, because I was in business, live alone, the, the small businesses yeah. outside nightclubs. There's a chapati stall, yes. and it's mine, but nobody knows. That but apart yours. from the person yeah. who are running it, it, yeah, you know. And uh, I had a community there that I was connecting with. Mm. I was into boxing, uh, although I didn't go far mm -hmm. with it, but I had that boxing community that every gym knew me to the extent that back in the day, I was among the first people that had what the young men or women call today a gari. I was the first to have a gang, although my gang was small, but we were a huge team of boxers mm -hmm. that would meet, go partying, go to heritage or botanical, those are uh, end of year or holiday makers bashes, mm -hmm. would go there together. It's various things that made me known. So, so that means at that point, if I had asked one group of people about Bobby Wine, they knew the boxer. Mm -hmm. Another group knew the, the business exactly. guy, small business. Another group exactly. <laughs> knew a musician. Exactly. So when people said they knew Bobby Wine, it yeah. was for different things. Yeah, and some didn't call me Bobby Wine then. Some just called me Bobo. Mm. Others called me Jaja Bobo. Depending on which yeah. life they knew. Exactly. <laughs> Others were just calling me Chibanda mm. back then. It's a music that stamped down the Bobby Wine name. And How, know, how did you then decide to merge everything into the Bobby Wine of music or did that just I find didn't it? decide it it just defined itself mm. naturally as time went by help me understand what beef contributed because there was a couple of years where mm. even to be defined as top three artists mm. it's almost like the three of you fought your way to those positions and both in physical fighting 
real. <laughs> and in musical fighting. True. <laughs> By the way, I never really wanted that beef. The physical fights? The physical fights. Because they were unfair. How? Not to me. Okay. But to the people that were fighting with me. Mm -hmm. They were really unfair. Because none of them even ever put a scratch on me. All through the years. Um, I got into music. Mm -hmm. Chameleon had risen Because of the three of you, he had gone yeah, first. Yeah, he went first. Then Baby Cool. Mm -hmm. And these guys, they were my elders in age. And uh, I was an underdog. Of course, Baby Cool comes from Kamacha. Yeah. We're only separated by mm -hmm. the road, by that road that <laughs> yeah. divides classes. It comes from true, the true, true. upper class, and I come from the ghetto. Mm. And that was the kind of relationship mm -hmm. that we always had, you know. According to him, we were the underdogs, yeah. the ghetto people, which, you know, is all right. However, when we got into music, mm -hmm. now the element of boyish competition Started. came up. Mm -hmm. You know, Chameleon was a star already and was enjoying it. And then Baby Cool was. Mm -hmm. And then before long, boom, there was this rag ghetto tag. Child. There was this <laughs> ghetto child. So that competition started. From who, though? The beef started on the day when Chameleon drove a car. He had a convertible car written on Dorothea. Yes. So the like first, a red car car. Yes, yeah. the first gig that I got to perform on a promotion. The so they got me in the ghetto and I was killing it on stage. Mm -hmm. And then Chameleon drove into the crowd while I'm on stage, into my crowd. Of course, you will add a hit song then. Anybody, even if you are Michael Jackson and Justin Bieber drives a car into your <laughs> or, 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 or audience when you are at the peak of your performance, yeah. you know, it distracts. I did not take it in. So when he drove in, the people's attention yeah, turned, temporarily turned, turned to, him to him because, as you were saying, he was a star. And exactly. He had it was, was it deliberate? Do you think he did it deliberately? Most definitely. Okay. And uh, later on, he apologized for it. For that particular yes. incident. Yes, but immediately after apologizing, <laughs> he said, but you know, I'm a star, and I had to teach you how stars behave. Right. So the apology was <laughs> bastardized immediately. Yeah. And uh, I cast back, then he started a fight, and I ended it. Like I said, those are not things I'm very proud of. Right. Because, first of all, those fights were unfair because it was always me beating, beating. them, mm -hmm. not the other way around.